This next story is as serious as any we have covered or likely will cover uh, on the Zero Hour. It is the fact that the Amazon itself is on fire. As most people know, there is a, a record level of fire taking place in the Amazon forest as we speak. In fact, uh, the Brazilian Space Research Agency has recorded, uh, as of this article that I'm reading, uh, roughly 73,000 fires in Brazil between January and August, so it's obviously gone higher since then. That's the highest since the space agency began recording these fires in 2013. It's an 80% jump from the previous year. Most of these fires were in the Amazon, and while fires are natural occurrences in the Amazon at this time of year, uh, many people also attribute uh, farmer activity and other um, commercial activity to these fires. Joining us now to discuss the situations, critical situation with us, is Christian Poirier, who is program director for Amazon Watch. Uh, so first of all, Christian, thank you for coming on the program. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, uh, secondly, would you say that I accurately stated the gravity and nature of the problem? Yes, I think you you did do a good summary of the kind of crisis we're witnessing today in the Brazilian Amazon. I would uh, only say that I think that the spike in forest fires this year has exceeded 85% from last year's uh, numbers. So um, while, as you mentioned, this is a phenomenon that takes place every year, um, the burning season um, across Brazil, not just in the Amazon, what we're witnessing this year is nearly a doubling of the numbers of fires intentionally set, the vast majority, well, the majority of which um, are in the Brazilian Amazon. So, at the risk of asking a leading question, what has happened between now and this year that would lead to, in essence, a doubling of the destruction of the uh, rainforest uh, by humans? The obvious answer is the ascension to power of an authoritarian and ruthless leader, um, Jair Bolsonaro, who is incredibly anti-environmental um, and antagonistic to the human rights of the indigenous peoples who live in the Amazon and who are its best stewards. Jair Bolsonaro from day one has put environment, Brazil's environmental protections, which are quite rigorous, and human rights protections uh, under attack. He has attacked uh, the demarcation, the titling of indigenous territories, saying that indigenous peoples have too much land, that they should be opening their lands up for industrial activities, uh, equating them to cavemen and zoo animals, this sort of incredibly racist, exclusionary rhetoric that he's been employing against the best guardians of the Amazon, who are in fact um, the owners of 22% of that biome, and also his attacks on Brazil's environmental protections. His attacks on Brazilian environmental policy, enacted by his so-called environmental minister, Ricardo Salas, have rolled back 30 years of environmental progress in Brazil, to such an extent that the environmental agency, IBAMA, that enforces environmental law, can no longer do its job, uh, doesn't have the funds and wherewithal to do that, and it's also had its staff completely uh, demoralized by uh, this regime. So what we're seeing today is really a, a situation, a perfect storm, if you will, where Brazil's human rights and environmental, environmental protections are under assault, and we see actors in the Brazilian Amazon setting fires uh, with wanton impunity. Uh, these actors have the ability to act without any consequence because Bolsonaro has made it clear that environmental protections and human rights are an impediment to Brazil's growth, which is absurd. Um, he's also made it clear that you can attack and invade communities uh, without any consequence. Um, and you know it, this is fueling a process today that is obviously clearly linked to the global emergency that these fires represent. So let's talk, before we go back to the specifics of the Brazil situation, which I want to do, Christian Poirier, I want to talk a little bit about the global emergency you just alluded to. Why, I think many, if not most of our listeners have a sense of the importance of the Amazon rainforest, but why, just to be clear, why is this of such global importance and consequence? The Amazon rainforest is a cornerstone of global climactic stability. It drives global weather patterns. It hosts 10% 
of global biodiversity, 5% of which is as, uh, only 5% of which has been studied. Uh, it actually hosts as well 20% of the planet's free flowing fresh water. It is one of the most important buffers against runaway climate change. These fires are destroying vast areas of the very forests we need for our future survival. In doing so, they're releasing enormous quantities of carbon dioxide into our, the global atmosphere, and they're also destroying uh, this, this carbon sink by releasing its stored up carbon. Um, we need the Amazon to sequester carbon. We need it to also um, hold vast amounts of, uh, amounts of carbon in its plants, in its soil. And what the fires do is that they absolutely destroy the Amazon's ability to render this incredibly important service to, to all of uh, humanity. Uh, so this is why it's a gl of global importance. This is why we need to see a global response to what is essentially an Amazonian problem. The Amazonian states that are burning today uh, not just Brazil, Bolivia, Venezuela, Colombia, um, all have the mandate and the responsibility to protect their own forests and to put out these fires. But absent uh, their ability to do so and absent the responsible behavior we all rely on them to be carrying out in, in regard to their forests, we need to see global cooperation to put out these fires as well. So to be clear, uh, the implication of everything you're saying is that the entire uh, cyclical process that is putting at least something of a break on climate change, uh, which is already accelerating at an unacceptable and destructive pace, is those breaks are in effect being removed by this uh, burning of the Amazon rainforest. So not only is it harming the forest itself as a home to enormous biodiversity and, and the peoples who live there, but is actually endangering further the whole planet uh, dramatically, I, I think, when it comes to climate change, right? That's right. Uh, we have, this is untold damage to our climate. We cannot gauge the, the enormity of the, the threat that these fires bring today. And it's also important to note this is the beginning of a process where the fires could actually intensify over the next month. September is actually the worst of the, of the burning uh, <clears throat> months in the Brazilian Amazon. And um, for that reason, we're witnessing a climactic emergency. We're also, unfortunately, witnessing a government that is not willing to accept its responsibility, that's trying to defer attention, trying to do everything it can to create uh, just attention elsewhere, when in fact, uh, we need to understand that it is um, very much responsible for what's happening today. And so we, with that knowledge, we need to use uh, our influence and our power to push back, to create leverage over this reckless regime and, and demand that it carries out the environmental stewardship and the upholding of human rights in the Amazon that we all need. And again, we're talking to Christian Poirier, uh, um, who is program director of Amazon Watch. Let's talk a little bit about Jair Bolsonaro, because um, uh, Mr. Bolsonaro became uh, a leader of Brazil after some what many of us consider a highly questionable legal and other machinations that got us to this point. He is, by most classic definitions of the term, a highly totalitarian leader. He, uh, there have been upticks of multiple kinds of violence. Now, various international groups and bodies have offered to come in and help with the burning of the Amazon. As of, as of this moment, as we are recording this, uh, he has used various reasons and perceived indignities and so on to even uh, not accept a small, some of the small, uh, uh, relatively small offerings that have been made to help out. Uh, what is going on there? Is he, uh, is, does he have some sort of political deal with the people who are burning the Amazon for profit? Is that what this is about? Absolutely. Uh, Jair Bolsonaro arguably was brought to power uh, by Brazil's agribusiness sector. Uh, known as the Ruralistas, these actors dominate Brazil's Congress, and they also have a very important role in Brazil in the Bolsonaro uh, cabinet. Uh, he is doing the bidding of Brazil's agribusiness sector. And when I say the agribusiness sector, it's important to note this is a very diverse, a very large and important part of Brazil's economy. So I'm not trying to label the entire sector as a sort of 
um, a monolith that's very diverse. And, and so I'm talking about its worst actors. Its worst, its worst actors are doing the, um, the worst rollbacks on human rights and environmental protections we've seen in a generation in Brazil's Congress. And Bolsonaro is their emissary. He's carrying out these attacks uh, without, well, basically on their behalf. And uh, it's, it's important to note as well that Brazil's ranching industry is responsible for the vast majority of deforestation in the Amazon today. And those are the actors that are setting the biggest fires, Brazilian ranchers uh, and land speculators. Speculators who want to clear public lands that they then can use to speculate. Uh, so Bolsonaro represents these, these interests. And I would also argue he's, he's representing some of the worst and most brutal illegal actors in the Brazilian Amazon as a result. Uh, Bolsonaro has ties, his family has clear ties to militias in Rio. This has been well documented. And some of the, the uh, militias we see uh, operating in the Brazilian countryside uh, in, in the Amazon today are somewhat similar in their power um, and in their brutality. And I consider this to be a wholly illegitimate and truly illegal regime that has been has come to power. Um, I've mentioned the ethics of Bolsonaro, of which there are very, very few. Um, and his coming to power actually is a result of the use, very sophisticated use of fake news. We're familiar with that in this country. Um, but, you know, Donald Trump came to power in part because of a very sophisticated use of Facebook as a platform to spread misinformation. Bolsonaro used WhatsApp um, as a platform to spread misinformation among the Brazilian public and really hoodwink a large segment of, Brazilians, of Brazil's public, which was rightfully tired um, of the business as usual politics uh, in Brazil that we witnessed over a number of years uh, under the PT and other actors uh, and, and sought to change um, this, this, uh, this scenario by bringing in someone who was labeled as an outsider, who had actually been a congressional backbencher for almost 30 years. Bolsonaro was not an outsider. He was clearly linked to some of the most corrupt actors in Brazil. These are these are the actors within the um, Ruralista Bloc, who I mentioned just now. And <clears throat> he is doing an enormous disservice to Brazilian democracy right now. I mentioned indigenous peoples as one of the minorities is attacking. And they're an incredibly important group in Brazil because of the fact not only that they, they have rightful title to a good portion of the, of the country and their rights are incredibly important, but also that they're stewards of, of almost a quarter of the Amazon itself and the best stewards at that. But they're not the only group that he's attacking. He's attacking LGBT communities, attacking the Afro-Brazilian community. He's attacking uh, free speech and free press and free assembly. He is an authoritarian and frankly fascist leader uh, that we need to undermine at every step because he's an also a very important leader. If we understand Donald Trump, we also understand Jair Bolsonaro. They're both incredibly important uh, leaders at this time um, for in the fight against climate change. They're both climate deniers. They're both exacerbating the, the runaway issues we're seeing today, and they both need to be addressed head on. And I, I would only add to that based on what I know that it, it, when, when a word like fascist is used for someone like Jair Bolsonaro, it's not, you know, sometimes gets used as a pejorative or whatever. He is literally, uh, um, in my understanding, but correct me if I'm wrong, he has literally uh, displayed and made statements of sympathy, symbolic and otherwise, to fascist regimes and movements from Brazil's past. Is that correct? That's correct. Jair Bolsonaro frequently eulogizes Brazil's military dictatorship. He's gone as far as to say the military dictatorship made an error by only torturing and not killing. If they had killed 30,000, 40,000 people, they would have done a real service to Brazil. They would have gotten rid of some of these people that, for example, led to a flourishing, vibrant democracy um, under the PT, uh, the Workers' Party, um, and were those very people who brought down the military dictatorship. He also um, talks about the, the way that the military dictatorship made an error in not massacring indigenous peoples, much like the um, American cavalry did. If the, American, if the military dictatorship had carried out this act as the cavalry did in the United States, we wouldn't have this problem we have today. Um, this is, these are statements out of his own mouth. Um, 
and his love affair with Brazil's uh, military dictatorship uh, is apparent because what he's trying to do is bring Brazil back to that dark era. As I mentioned, we're talking about 30 years of human rights and environmental progress, 30 years since the military dictatorship fell, and 30 years since Brazil had a democratic constitution stated in 1988. He's trying to bring Brazil back to that time, and he's doing so in, in very clear terms. Um, so, yes, indeed, the word fascist is, was invented for people like him, um, and I would say he'd, he'd embrace that term uh, because of, of his extreme right-wing leanings, his, his desire to address issues in the way he has, uh, which, which is extremely uh, concerning, uh, to say the least, for, for Brazilians and for all of humanity. Well, Christian, you, you, you've described a very grim situation, uh, both for uh, Brazil's democracy now in the hands of this fascist, both for the global environment, as well as the, the envi precious environment of the Amazon rainforest itself. Is there anything people listening to, watching us right now, can do to try to help, to try to get involved, to learn more? Yes, there are several ways that we can all get involved um, in what's happening today. I, I stress that this is, while it's very much a Brazilian problem, it needs to be led, the resistance to Bolsonaro must be led by Brazilian social movements. We have a lot of, of, of a major role to play in acting in solidarity with these movements. For example, Brazil's national indigenous movement and its allies are among the most vibrant um, resistance movements to Bolsonaro. Um, the ways that we, we can respond are to get informed, are to take action in our networks. Um, and one way to get informed as well is to understand how we may unwittingly be complicit with what Bolsonaro was doing today by enabling the worst actors operating, especially in the Brazilian Amazon, by buying their products and financing these, these uh, bad businesses in Brazil. Amazon Watch conducted a study, uh, a report that released earlier this year called Complicity and Destruction, and it looks at how North American and European uh, commodity traders, uh, buyers, and financial institutions are propping up this wholly destructive business as usual scenario. And we as consumers actually have a lot to say in this. We as constituents of governments that have a lot to say in trade policy uh, have a lot to say in this. And we must demand that this business as, as usual scenario that's given birth to the disaster we're witnessing in the Amazon today um, be taken to task, that, that we must revert this process together with our with the powers that be with policymakers in our countries with the, the corporations financial institutions that could be really part of the solution and not part of the problem as we're seeing right now um, need to take action with you know urgency to push back and create leverage over this regime in order to suppress uh, its worst tendencies and restore the rights of uh, Brazil's indigenous peoples, uh, for example, and the, the environmental protection so integral to the future of the Amazon. Well, we will be following this story extremely closely. We'll also be uh, checking out your work at Amazon Watch, and uh, we will continue to cover it. So Christian Poirier, uh, Program Director for Amazon Watch, thank you so much for your excellent work in this area, and thanks for coming on the program. Thanks so much for having me.